Norden's Ark and the Worldwide Fund for Nature, WWF, have implemented a conservation project in and around Anuski National Park in the Russian Far East. The project, funded by the Swedish Postcode Lottery, is now complete after three years. The large and diverse deciduous forests wake up slowly in May after a harsh winter. The water of the river Anuski flows very fast during spring floods and is far from harmless, yet it is the only transport route in the roadless national park. The area has a continental climate with hot summers and cold winters. The forests show clear traces of recurring forest fires with even-aged white birch. This is the home to the world's northernmost tigers and their prey, such as sika deer, roe deer, and red deer. A hollow high up in the ash tree acted as the hibernation site for an Asian black bear, but as the tracks show, the bear became a tiger's prey during the winter. Wild boars are important food for the tigers, and since the boars depend on fruits of Mongolian oak and Korean pine, these trees are also key species for the welfare of tigers. Wild boar is also popular prey for local hunters, including poachers. Poaching is a big problem for both tigers and their prey, but here we were fortunate enough to expose the poacher, Victor, just as he shot a wild boar. The proximity to China, where the high demand for tiger parts causes prices to skyrocket, means that Russian custom officers must be extremely alert. Illegal forestry of important oaks and pines, which have a high financial value, also affect the tiger's chances of survival. The Project Northern Tiger started in 2009 in order to fight these threats and increase the number of tigers and their prey. The National Park and its rangers who are active inside the park are the project's key stakeholders. The inspectors at the Ministry of Environment are responsible for checking that all hunting outside the National Park is done with proper permits. The Nanais are also important stakeholders. They are the area's indigenous people who have lived off fishing along the Amur River for thousands of years. As a result of the project, there are now three surveillance brigades in the National Park and two new ranger stations where rangers can warm up during freezing cold winter days. From there, rangers can effectively control the main entrances to the National Park and prevent poachers from entering. The project has also purchased a four-wheel drive vehicle, motorboat engines, and snowmobiles to make patrolling more effective. Hunting inspectors are now better equipped so that they can control the lumberjacks and fur hunters outside the park more easily. The results so far are very good. More than 300 poachers have been arrested during the project period, and 65 weapons have been seized. Russian media have reported from the project repeatedly. Here, from the Nanai village, constructed by the project in the National Park to boost tourism and showcase the ancient culture of the Nanai people. For example, old log traps for sable hunting. The number of tourists visiting the National Park has doubled during the project period. An education center for school children in the area has been constructed in the National Park Office. 
with an exciting program about tigers and practical activities, such as the planting of Korean pine. More than 7,000 children have received environmental training. A popular and rewarding element of the project for members of the National Park and Hunting Inspection was a study tour to the Nordic Ark Zoo in Sweden. To learn more about ecotourism, fisherman Sixten Sutterberg invited the delegation to experience lobster fishing. And at the National Veterinary Institute, the visitors learned about ungulate disease and veterinary medicine. Especially rewarding was the exchange between Russian visitors and Swedish hunters. Professional hunter Victor Carlson demonstrated effective methods for feeding ungulates like deer and wild boars during the harsh winter conditions. Ecotourism activities like carnivore spotting is currently missing in the project area, although both tigers and bears should provide exciting attractions for visiting tourists. When visiting Finland, tourist entrepreneur Lassi Rautunainen explained how such tourism might be developed. The visitors had the opportunity to sit in photo hides to experience the adventure of wild carnivores. You can mount the cameras. Today, ungulates get supplementary feed during winter in about 40 places within the Anuski National Park and the number of sighted ungulate footprints increases every year. Snowmobiles are used to survey the forest despite temperatures of 30 degrees below zero Celsius. The park rangers are currently working on a test survey to prepare for the 2015 Tiger Survey. The great news is that lately the rangers have observed an increase in the number of tiger footprints. The project has purchased some 50 camera traps, which are used frequently. At the start of the project, the photo showed absolutely nothing. This bear, tiger! But then, tigers began to appear on the photos. During the final discussion with the Ministry of Environment in Khavarovsk, we could all conclude that the number of tigers in and around the national park had increased from 9 to 17, almost a doubling in only three years.